Yeah. So, um, Ultimate Class 9, this is the name of my channel on YouTube. Probably, if I'm not sharing, if I'm not doing the audio lessons, if I'm not uh, doing one of my lessons with people, I usually share some of the content on my YouTube channel. Yeah, so this is the name of the channel. Probably, if um, there's something about IELTS or working in the UK, you think you are bothered about it, can go there. Maybe I might have given an answer to that because I do share um, answers to questions people have asked on this channel as well. So, um, in the previous lesson, I don't know, most people might not have joined the WhatsApp group, but we've talked about, I think the first lesson I talked about was 10 tips and techniques to get band 7 plus in the IO speaking test. And, uh, I will share that on my YouTube channel. I will share that on my YouTube channel for anyone who didn't get license. I mean, that license to also have access to it. And I also talked about how to plan for a band 7 plus writing tax one. I won't go much into details in this lesson, but I believe that by the time we are done with this lesson, I mean, I will talk a little bit about it. So if you weren't part of that lesson, also get a fair shake. Um, there's noise coming from somewhere. All right, so um, I also talk about lesson three: how to write a perfect introduction for the writing tax one. It was an audio lesson in the WhatsApp group. So if you haven't had that, I also make sure I share that on the YouTube channel for you to get access to that. And Today, I did. I think two days ago or yesterday, I should have shared with you how to organize your body into paragraphs, but I couldn't do that. So I'll be doing that in this um, lesson. So today, I'm going to learn how to write a tax one essay. So we are going to combine all the uh, lessons you've done, except the lesson one, which is the speaking test. And then you get another day, you get to know how to write a tax one essay. You see, the tax one should take you 20 minutes. And with the 20 minutes, you are supposed to write 150 words. This is a perfect example of the tax one. This is a bar chart. And in my previous lessons, I talked about the various diagrams and processes you can get when it comes to writing the tax one. Um, let me say this. If I don't want to finish up the lesson and then... Um, you ask questions, but I believe I say something in, in here that you don't understand. Just unmute yourself and then ask. Please, is that okay with all of us? Yes, yes sir. sir. Right. So if there's anything, I wouldn't want to finish and then, so probably if there's something you don't understand, you just address it and then you move forward. Yeah. So there's a possibility that you get a diagram like this, just a single diagram like this. And you're supposed to describe in 20 minutes. And with this, you are required to write 150 words. So, it might seem very difficult and then cumbersome, but I think with practice, um, we can get there. So, you can also get a diagram like this as a tax one. This is also a bar chart. So, you can see that the bar chart comes in different forms and then formats. You can also get something like this. And um, you have to be very critical, I mean, careful when writing diagrams in this format because a lot of the day they want you to report the main features and then you make comparisons where relevant. I believe that you can all see my screen. Yeah, you can. Okay, that's fine. All right. So, um, you can also be given a, a, bar, a pie chart. Something like this to describe, and it goes the same way. You have to report the main features, and you make comparisons per relevant. Also, we give this also another bar um, pie chart, but this time there are three, and you have to write report the main features. Let me come in. Okay. We, we, we for me, I only see the ultimate class nine. Nine. Uh, nine. I can't, I can't see, see anything, anything again. again. Wow. How about the others? Yeah. yeah. For the, for the slides, slides, I can, I can see, see the slides, slides on the left corner side, but I can't see any. 
up on fourth flat, flat nine. nine. That, that is the only thing I can, I can see from my screen here. here. Same, Same here. here. Wow. Yes, yes, yes. yes, yes. Wow. Now, now it's, it's yeah. yeah. I see now. Thank, Thank you. I can also see it now. Okay. Go ahead. Go ahead. Okay. okay. Uh, so, um, I was showing some of the diagrams, the possible diagrams you can miss in your aisles. I think most people are familiar with this diagram because it, I'm drawing the lessons. I think this is the diagram I, I used. So as I was saying, um, there's a possibility that you may miss this diagram in your IELTS writing tax one. And you have to write uh, 150 words in 20 minutes with this diagram. So this is a bar chart and it's similar to the first one. But, you know, the parameters in here are different. But the same format applies. This is another bar chart, which looks quite confusing, but it has the same format. And here you have to report the main features. And you give comparison where relevant. So you can see it states in the question. As you report the main features, and then you make comparisons. This is a pie chart, and uh, it also carries the same information. You see, writing that one, whether you are writing the map, you are writing the pushes, you are writing whatever, the format is the same. But it's up to you to know before you even start with the whole writing that one, you know the various diagrams you'll be questioned on. So that, those are some of them I'm showing you. So this is a pie chart. You can have two of them, and you have to report on the main features, and then you make comparison. So this is a pie chart and this is a map. You see, most people do not want to have a map in their writing that's one because they believe it's too bulky and very confusing. But um, I think in this lesson, I'm not, I, I can't talk much about it today, but in the subsequent lessons, I'll make sure that I give you a simple trick to write a map because you can't predict. Some, some people may choose not to work on the map because they believe that they are not going to get maps in their writing that's one. But I think it's better to prepare for whichever your diagrams, your map, your processes, so that whichever comes, I mean, you know how to go about it. Because, as I said, you shouldn't go and waste away money. Don't go and waste away energy and your time preparing for the IELTS. It's very painful. Yeah, it's very painful. Because look at the amount of time you have to, I mean, put in to prepare. I mean, the practice, printing, um, practice materials and all of that. If you fail, it's very, very painful and a bad experience. So this is also a map. So you can see that um, it's quite different from what I showed you earlier. But it still has the same format. You look at it in a subsequent lessons. And this is a brochure. This is one of the um, tax one essays people don't like. So this is a process where to describe how beer is produced. This is also a process where to talk about how the is generated. The diagram may look very confusing, but there's a formula to go about it. So now we are going to start the main thing. So in my previous um, lessons, I started with the introduction. I was write the introduction, and uh, after in IELTS writing tax one, they will give you a specialized writing tax one sheet. We call it the answer booklet. And here, um, I think it's two, yeah, two separate papers um, stapled together, and. You have to structure your essay in a way that the examiner can follow. Because if you write your essay anyhow, it is very difficult for the examiner to follow. And the only option is to get a lower band score. And you know, to work in the UK, you require a band score of um, 6.5 and above in the writing tax one. Sorry, in the writing test. And uh, the rest, reading, um, listening, speaking, should be seven plus. I don't know if any of you have heard of this because writing IELTS, you should know the country you want to work with. And each country has uh, the required band score. So, um, 
Yeah, this, this is Frank again. again. Okay. Okay, okay. So you are saying if you write on the, the island and you can choose, can choose the country you want to go. Apart from the US, US right? right? Yeah. So can, can somebody choose? Can somebody choose? You said? I didn't hear a question. I'm saying if you examination. Okay. If I had you guys, you will choose the country which you want to go. Yeah. Through the examination, I pass. Can I choose another country apart from UK? Yeah. Okay. Thank you very much. As I said, for me, first of all, my interest was with the USC. So once I was ready to hire, the country I chose was USC. But um, okay. after. I had registered and was doing my preparation. I, I, mean, I came across someone who was also who knew somebody who has worked out to work in the UK. And okay. I, I mean, upon the conversation, I realized that it was shorter. I mean, the UK was a shorter duration. I mean, I could go in the short okay. time as compared to the US. So I had to okay. it. Yeah. So I was working towards the UK, and there. Had to have the main reason why, okay, the main reason why I asked that question is that I have a friend. Who is uh, 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 my, uh, uh, my uh, he, he went to <laughs> for his master's. Okay. When he came to the university, he started a portfolio of white expression. So that is why. So, so if the island is a portfolio, is it a portfolio? Yeah, Australia is part of the only three countries here. Uh, UK. And the UK consists of Scotland, okay. Wales, Ireland, um, England, and okay. Australia. Australia okay, is the difference, but it's also, they also speak English and they require Irish. And then Canada and USA. Yeah. But each country requires a certain specific ground score. So, depending on the country you want to work, you have to work towards the band score they require. No, okay. So Australia, for Thank instance, you very much. We can continue. Okay. So Australia, for instance, they require band seven throughout the four aspects. Canada require band seven throughout the four aspects. Um, USA six point five six. I mean, is acceptable. And then the UK, the least you can get in the writing is six point five, and the rest is seven plus. Okay. So um, let's move on. So this is basically the format for the. Tax one. So whichever diagram you get, whether it's a process, whether it's a um, a map, whether it's um it's a diagram, this is the format you have to um inculcate. So first of all, your introduction is very important. You need your introduction here. After which you have to leave a paragraph. You see, in IELTS we use line as a paragraph. Don't start writing your Introduction, leaving the wide gap somewhere here. As we used to know, I mean, in Ghana, when they say leave a paragraph, you leave a space here and then you start writing whatever you want to write. In IELTS, I mean, it's accepted in IELTS, but it becomes very difficult for examiners to locate which is a paragraph and which is not because you see, if you are leaving a paragraph of two centimeters for the first one, it should be equal in all. But sometimes you see someone leave a bigger paragraph for the introduction and then a smaller one for which makes the works um, disorganized. So in IELTS, it's acceptable to start your introduction on, from the line. You write your introduction throughout, and when you are done, you leave a line as a paragraph. So it means that you go to the next line and then start your overview. So after your overview, you leave another line as a paragraph. You go to the body paragraph one. After your body paragraph one, you leave a line as a paragraph. You go to body paragraph two, and if you want to write body paragraph three, you leave another line and you write your body paragraph three. By the end of the day, you should have probably four to five paragraphs. So introduction giving one paragraph, overview another paragraph, body paragraph one another, body paragraph two and body paragraph three. So um, that's basically the paragraph and method when it comes to the IELTS writing class one, even the tax two as well. So.
So we are going to look at how to just, I just want you to know the format. The format is very important. So this is how you organize. You need your introduction. And in my previous lesson, I said that the introduction is usually gotten from the question here. We are going to paraphrase this question. And I think I should, I showed you guys, I mean those who are present in the um, audio lessons I did in the WhatsApp group. I showed you guys how to paraphrase. And I won't be talking much about it. I'll upload that video on my YouTube channel. So anyone who didn't get access can have that free. And the overview. The overview is reporting, um, I mean, it's about the general impression about the diagram. And uh, uh, in actual sense, the conclusion. So people will be prepared to write the overview after the body. But it's not advisable because the overview is the engine. It's the engine of the tax one. If you don't write the overview and even have your 150 ways, you've still not done anything. You have a lower bound score. So that is why I usually prefer to write my overview after the introduction and then my body paragraphs follow. So if um, anyone has any questions so far, we are going to look at how to. I'm not going to go into details about how to write the introduction because we've done that already. But today I want us to look at the format and then you write the whole essay. And uh, you see how the whole thing goes. Do so if you have any questions about Okay, okay so two, I'm back again. again. Okay. Concerning the, the paragraphs we were talking about, is it an empty life, two empty life, or you will just have halfway and then you can know from there? Because I'm not getting it well. Really? A full life, an empty life. So let's say you will. An empty life, full one, one life. Yeah, full one life. You use uh, a okay. That is the acceptable. So, so, okay, so from the, the one line under the overview. Yes. The overview one die and one die under all the body. Yeah. That's, 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 okay, that's okay, with okay with me. Thank you. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So, so, don't practice in this way. Don't try leaving um, that indentation we are used to. Because it makes it sometimes very really difficult. If you can actually have the same um, measure of indentation for all your own paragraphs, then you are able to use that own system. But if you can't, just leave a line as a paragraph. So after you introduce, you leave a full line. After what you leave a full line. After body paragraph one, you leave a full line. Body paragraph two. So it tells the examiner, allow the examiner to distinguish between your paragraphs. So it's very important. Alright, so let's move on to look at I want to look at the introduction for this particular diagram. So with the introduction, we have to write about 50 to 60 words. Frank, can you please mute yourself? There is noise on the background. Okay. So, in the introduction, I have to write 50 to 60 words. And it's very important. And the introduction is gotten from the question over here. So, before you write the introduction, ask yourself, do I understand what the question is asking me to do? So it says the graph below shows information about the activities that New Zealand and Australian children enjoyed doing the most in 2007. So this is the question we are going to paraphrase. And when we say paraphrase, what we mean is that we are going to change the words to different forms. We change the words in the question. So once you try keeping the same words in the question as your introduction, it tells the examiner that you are not, you don't have command over the English language. It's like you don't have enough words to express yourself, and that calls for a lower band score. And you know when you have a lower band score in the writing test one, it affects your writing uh, band score because you see, in the writing test we have writing tax one and tax two, and they will strike average of these two, and they give you the band score. So in actual sense, the writing tax one is marked as band zero to band nine, and the tax two is marked as band zero to band 9. 
So after us, let's say if you got band 7 in the writing tax 1 and you got band 8 in the writing tax 2, you will strike the average of the two um, tasks. So 7 plus 8 over 2. 7 plus 8 is 15. So 15 divided by 2, which is about 17.5. Sorry, 7.5. We are having a band score of 7.5, which is a pass for the writing tax and uh, the writing test. So you take note the tax one is important as the tax two. So to write your introduction, you need to ask yourself which words can you paraphrase? Which of these words can you paraphrase? So usually I prefer to paraphrase the, uh, the graph shows information activities enjoy then children we can see that the other day you should change about 60 percent of the words in the in the question so let me clean the board and uh, we write the introduction Alright, so I just want to write the introduction live here. We have done that in the audio, so I'm not going to um, go into details. So here, if I'm to write this introduction, what I'm going to do is that I know the graph is a bar, a bar graph. So I'll add bar to the graph. So I'll just start by saying the bar. Okay. I'm not seeing the bar graph. Yeah, yeah, I cannot see the bar graph you are sharing. But can you see the screen now? No, I, no, I can't see the screen. Can see the screen. Okay. Uh, Let me see if I want to wait for him. Okay. I see now. Yeah, yes, I can see now. So, um, Basically, I was talking about the introduction, the paraphrasing, and the whole lot of that. And I underlined some of the ways um, you can change. Some of the ways that can be changed. So the graph shows information, activities. These are the ways I think I can change. So once you have the question, ask yourself, which of these ways can I change? And this means I have another vocabulary or another way that can replace the ways you want to change. And you should have about sixty percent of the words in the question change. Okay, all right. So let me switch to my. So 
I underlined the graph. I wanted to probably add something to this to make it a little different from what is in the question. Because I know the diagram here is bar. So I added bar graph. The bar graph. Always please forget about the below. Because on the answer booklet, you are not going to draw the diagram below. So if you add the below, it's like you are you don't understand what you are doing. Yeah. So now the bar graph shows. What word can I use in place of shoes? So let me see. I have about I used to have yeah, street. Yeah, yellow street. So you should have about three or four ways to represent it I mean, it. Yeah, some of the things you can easily um come across in the tax one. So the pits. And always don't forget your subject verb agreement. This is a singular verb. So once you are replacing it another word or another verb, it should be it should be in a singular form. So the page illustrates demonstrates represents so there are quite a lot of them you can choose which one you prefer so the bar chart illustrates so now Information, what way can I use in place of information? So this is a paraphrasing method. Ask yourself, if you haven't got any word, you remember that once you practice, get yourself familiarized with some of the words. I mean that those easy words that are common in the tax one. Otherwise, on the examination you have 20 minutes and you have to sit and think to get a way to replace uh, whatever word you are looking for. But once you have some words at your vocabulary, you just pick them up right and then you go. And the introduction is your first impression. You should make sure that you are not making any mistake in the introduction, whether grammatical, tenses, or whatever. Because once the examiner spots that you've made a mistake in there, you know, you have to write only 50 to 60 words of introduction. And you are making a mistake in this. What about the body? Where you have to write more than 50 words. So it gives the examiner the impression that, I mean, you are going to make more mistakes in the body. And that will go against you. So information, you can. The only word I know here for now is data, and that's what I've been using since. So the information, the graph below shows information about. So in place of information, I write data. The graph illustrates data, and about. I can use the word. I just version regarding. So you can still. It's not compulsory to. I mean, you can still use about, but it should actually fit in whatever you are writing. Classroom data regarding now the activities. We are talking about activities Australians and New Zealanders love to do. So you ask yourself, how many activities are they talking about here? You've got about six. One, two, three, four, five, six. So there are six activities. So in the paraphrasing format, you can add that to your introduction. So I can say the background that should data regarding six the six activities. So now I'm going to New Zealand is the name of a country, I can't change it. Australia is the name of a country, I can't change it. But at least children, I can put a new word or a different word there. So I can say the background last week data regarding the six activities the young people of Australia. So in place of children, I'm using the word young people. Uh, yeah. Uh, is, is New Zealand and Australia, Australia are in, are in one, one continent. Can you, Can you decide? Yeah, right. yeah, I even forgot. New Zealand is part of the English speaking country and they also require band seven throughout. Band seven and above throughout. Yeah. 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 So if you want to um, pursue your nursing in the New Zealand with IELTS, you need band seven throughout. If you get 6.5 in any of them, you, you have been disqualified. You can't apply. Yeah. So depending on the country, that's why you have to just know the country you want to work with and you prepare your IELTS as such. So for me, my aim was to get band seven in all, so that at least I qualify for each one of them. 
If I'm not happy with you, I'm going here. If I'm not happy with you, I'm going here. Yeah, so... My, my question, question was, was uh, New, Zealand New Zealand and Australia, Australia are, are in the same, the same continent. Yeah. So can, so you, can decide you decide and by writing, by writing the, uh, regarding, regarding the, the Australian, Australian continent, continent, the data about the Australian, about the Australian okay. continent, instead of writing the Australia and New Zealand? No. Just, just, just keep, you see, there are some things you can't change. Okay. okay. For example, someone's name. If you have mentioned someone's name here, you can't uh, put a different, I mean, word there. Okay, you know? yeah, so yeah. keep the names, names, year. But sometimes the year, you can even, depending on how it has been framed, if it's from one point to the other, you can change it. But if it's just one specific, you should keep it. Okay. Yeah. And my, and my second, second question is, question is, uh, is it, you, will, you, will you be penalized if you change the sentence structure of the uh, introduction? No. What's your, What's your, okay. okay. You see, okay. the okay. paraphrasing okay. has to do with changing the words, putting in new vocabularies, and changing the sentence structure. Okay. Okay. Yeah. But I think it's better I always start with the bar graph, and then whichever way you can. Or the background illustrates, and then from there you can turn the sentence whichever way you want. Okay. okay. So, in place of children, I will put in the young people. I mean, children, we also have a word like juvenile. But I don't just put that word there. You should know how to use it. If you use it wrongly, it will go against you. So, make sure you are using the words you are sure of. So, young people, juvenile. So, I'm going to keep the young people. So let me write first. The young people of Australia or New Zealand. And uh, Australia. So I'll keep them short so that we don't leave. Now, enjoy. What other word can I put in place of enjoy? Um, can say show much interest in. Like. Um, what else? Or expressed much interest in. So whichever we, young people of Australia should. You see, I think the young people of New Zealand should like to do most in 2007 or you can decide to bring the year in between so you can see the six activities of the young people of um, New Zealand and Australia in 2007 like to do most so whichever we it's acceptable full stop and another thing is that people usually prefer to add the units so you can see here that the, the numbers are in percentages so you can see units are measured in percentages I didn't go by that but if you prefer to add that so I did the other day you should have about 60 to 50 ways so 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20, 21, 22, 23, 24, 24, 25, 26 so it's quite okay but people do prefer because I write 150 ways so what this means is that you have 20 to 30 ways in the introduction then you should think of, um, you have, out of 150 words, you have about 120 ways to write from your overview, from your body paragraph 1, body paragraph 2, body paragraph 3. So you just have to take note. So basically, this is how to go about the introduction. It's about getting some words at the bank. So once, once you practice the introduction, Make sure that there are some of the ways. I mean, get a book and write your vocabulary. What ways can I use in place of this? Should I meet them in the aisles? It helps you because at the end of the day, we don't have enough words. We have to think, and we have only 20 minutes to write. Okay. So, any question about the introduction? For me, no. For me, no. Okay. Means no. Means no. All right.
So um, it's a matter of practice. Let's keep on practicing because we are not going to get the same questions every day. We get different diagrams. So we can, uh, we can say, okay, this week I'm working on all. I am use this day to work on um, writing introduction for bar chart. So you look at the various, if you have the practice material, you look at the various bar charts that have come in the higher practice as one, and you start writing introductions, getting ways. Because it's likely that you need some of the ways in your, I mean, on your exam day, and then you wouldn't really have to think. So. So I want us to look at the overview. I've not talked about the overview. Yeah, so let's look at the overview. And uh, I hope you can see the screen now. You can still see the screen. Can I see the screen? Yes, yes. Okay, that's fine. So, with overview, it's a general impression about the diagram. So, when you look at the diagram, ask yourself, what is this diagram? Oh, let me go back. You ask yourself, what is this diagram um, talking about? We know that it's talking about six things. That or six activities that the New Zealand and Australian children love to do. So you ask yourself, which of them is mostly done by the Australians? Which of them is mostly done by the New Zealanders? So now, as part of your 20 minutes, that you'll be writing the tax one, you need about three to five minutes planning. The reason is that if you say you are just starting to write it, that's one. I mean, you just start writing this. The possibility that you miss most of the important things, because the question says you have to report on the main features and you make comparison. These are the two things you have to do here. So if you start writing and you don't try to find out what are the main features, at the end of the day you write, you get around 50 ways. But you may not have written anything according I mean, to the examiner. So you get a lower balance score. So you take three to five minutes from the 20 minutes. So now you'll be left with about 17 minutes to write 150 ways. And this will be very easy if you keep on practicing. I mean, you um, incorporate that in your practice session. So let's look at, you know, the blue bars represent the Australians. So you can see that. The Australians love to do sports. Now let's look at what the New Zealanders also love to do. They are interested in art and crafts. So you can put something like N and this is A representing Australia. Okay, so let's look at what they show less interesting. So these are the highest. So let's see, with Australia we can see that they show less interesting. Art and crafts. And New Zealand, they show less interest in sports and then going to park. Alright, so we can also look out for, okay, what, which of these activities do they have equal interest in? So when you look at the diagram, we can see that computer games. They all love to do this activity. So now at least we have gotten three distinctive things about the diagram. We can write our value for. So that's why it's advisable to I mean have time to look at that critical look at the diagram because there are times if you don't do that, you may end up writing things that are unnecessary. I mean that are not expected by the examiners. So you have to report the main features and make comparison. And another thing I have to know about the overview is that you have to write two to three lines. Uh, two to three lines. So you take notes. 
So if you write the overview, you ask yourself. So now we are looking at um, those that they have price interest in. We know that one already. Lowest interest. We've done that already. And then the equals. We also look at that already. So with this, we can pick two of these and write our overview for the, um, this particular diagram. So with the overview, always make sure to start with the word overall. This tells the examiner that you are starting your overview. So always make sure to start with overall. And then you continue with those right you want to see. So I prefer to write about the highest and then the equals. Someone can decide to write about the equals and then the lowest. So it depends on your preference. But here, you are, you are not backing your statements with numbers. So you're not going to say 15% um, of the Australians or both Australians and New Zealanders love computer games or have the same interest in computer games no you are not backing that with numbers you are only reporting the main features you see so you can see overall i think i have quite a lot of them here you can write there's no one way to write the overview so overall it is evident from the graph that the australian children showed highest interest in sporting activities i can't write them here but as i read you can so i mean jot something down it is, it's evident from the graph that so after you are done with your overall comma it is evident so let me try and then write the first one from the graph that the Dominant activities for the Australians. So And New Zealanders were sports. So you can see for the trillions, interest is sports, as you can see from this point. And arts and crafts. respectively so the word respectively means that the first activity goes for the first country and the second activity is art and craft goes for the second country so in this land you know have interest in art and craft while A low turnout was obvious for handicrafts. So you see that um, in place of the art and crafts, I have used another word, which is handicrafts. So it's up to you to get ways to express yourself or to move about in your essay. In Australia and uh, sports in New Zealand. So basically, and this is what I can see about the 
overview. So you see, I didn't back any of them. There's no numbers. There's no 15%, 20%. I'm just giving a general impression about the diagram. And once the examiner reach the overview, whatever he said, you confirm to what is on the diagram here. So I'm saying that the activities of the Australians and the dominant activities here for the Australians are um, is um, sports. So once the examiner gets here, you should see sports. And that of the New Zealand is attempt craft. So because this has to go about the overview, look at the main features. You can only see the main features when you take the time to plan. I also got um, plenty of them here. You can also write overall with a casual glance of the chart. The Australian children showed highest interest in sporting activities. However, it was the lowest in New Zealand. So you can see the other way around. Whilst the Australians showed highest interest in sporting activities, it was lowest in New Zealand, as you can see here. Again, there was a maximum record of art and craft in New Zealand. So you can see on the diagram. But the minimum participation for the Australians in 2007. So it's like the opposite way. Whilst the New Zealanders were interested in art and craft, it was lowest in Australia. And once they were, the Australians were interested in um, sports, it was lowest in New Zealand. So this has to go about your overview. So any question? It's okay. For me. For me. <laughs> All right. So I'll just look at the body. I'm not going to write, I'm going to give you the general thing about the body. How then how to how to report about. And even you can do that looking at your plan for the overview. Yeah. So it's like you plan once and it cut across whatever you are writing, the body, the overview, and everything. So with the body, you are going to have body paragraph one. Body paragraph two, body paragraph three, and then probably yeah, the highest you can go is body paragraph three, because you shouldn't write more than one fifty. I mean, you can write more than one fifty, but I shouldn't um, go into two hundred, three hundred, because you only have twenty minutes to do that. So you have in total sixty minutes for the writing test. 20 minutes for tax 1, 40 minutes for tax 2. And what I advise is that you should try as much as possible to write the tax 1 fast so that you can channel the remaining time to your tax 2. Because your tax 2 carries more marks than the tax 1. But that doesn't mean that the tax 1 is, isn't important. It's equally important, but I mean, with the tax 2, you are writing to 50 ways, and you know, you should have more time to catch up with this number of ways. So now, with your body paragraph one, you can see that once we are doing the uh, planning, he said we are looking at the highest. So this is the highest for the Australians. This is the highest for the New Zealanders. So we can say that, or in our first body paragraph, we can compare the highest. can compare the highest of Australia to the highest of New Zealand. So let's see. And uh, another thing I um, have to take note of is when writing a body paragraph, make sure that you have one idea in one paragraph. One idea in a paragraph. Don't combine ideas. What I mean is that if you are writing about highest, write highest in one paragraph, 
if you're writing about lowest, write lowest in one paragraph. If you're writing about equals, write equals in one paragraph. Or you can see from here that we are comparing, we are talking about two countries, Australia and New Zealand. You can put your paragraphs into talking about Australians, only Australian activities. So for example, with the paragraph one, I can start to talk about Australians. And I'll, I'll use the paragraph two for New Zealanders and all the activities the New Zealanders love to do. But when you go by this method, what you are doing is that you lack the ability to compare as the question is requiring you to do. Because here you are only talking about Australians and you can't compare to New Zealanders. So I usually prefer to go by, look at the highest, compare what is highest in Australia to what is highest in um, New Zealand. Compare what's lowest in Australia to what's lowest in um, New Zealand. So the lowest in New Zealand, lowest in New Zealand, lowest in Australia. And then you look at the equals. So you've got equals here, computer games for Australia and then New Zealand. So you see, another day, you have your three paragraphs ready. So I know my first paragraph, I'm going to talk about the highest. Second paragraph, I'll be talking about, I'll be comparing the lowest. And the third paragraph, I'll be talking about the equals. So there's one simple strategy you can adopt to help you organize your essay. So once the examiner picks your paper and gets to the body, you know, the highest, I mean, your partner is talking about our highest, so he's looking at the highest and the lowest. Second paragraph, he's looking at the lowest. So it's like you don't sway his eyes around, you don't mess up things. The organization is very important here. So you can start, I mean, it's better you start in a way that tells the examiner what you are talking about. So you can start by saying, comparing the highest activities enjoyed by the Australians and New Zealand children. It is obvious from the bar chat that the Australians showed much interest in sports, comma, which accounts, which accounts for so look at it now what's the percentage um here because the bar is not on it's not directly on the line you can use words like approximately because we are not sure of the exact percentage about around nearly so i want to use the word um Approximately, okay. So, which accounts for approximately? Let me shorten it. Twenty eight percent. While the New Zealanders, so you add that to the New Zealanders and then you back that with the number twenty five percent. So I don't know if um, I'm making sense with regards to how to organize the body. So you organize the body in this manner and you make sure that you start with something that will let the examiner know that you are talking about lowest, you are talking about highest, you are talking about equal. So with the second paragraph, you can see considering 
the lowest interest in the six activities so look at it we are talking about the lowest so you can see that Australians have low interest in art and craft and then the New Zealanders have low interest in going to the park and then sports so you can start something like this where is I'm not that you're talking about lowest when it comes to the equals taking the two countries into consideration it is apparent from the chat that the Australians and New Zealand children or the um, young people of Australia and New Zealand should equal interest or have the same interest in computer games or you can say um, taking the um, two countries into consideration is evident that 15% of both Australians and the New Zealanders showed much interest in computer games. So like, there's no one way to write in your body, but you make sure that it is well organized that the examiner can probably read. So this has to organize your body into paragraph. I think I would, uh, I'm not sure this pen will allow me to write a full essay. You know what I've written, but I can't see well. <laughs> I'm not sure this um what I'm doing. So with the body, we are backing it with numbers, unlike the overview. So know that with the overview, you can pick two, either the highest or the equals, or the highest and lowest, or the lowest and equals. You talk about it in the overview, but you don't back it with numbers. Once you come to your body, you can still use the same the highest, lowest, equal, but you back it with numbers. So that's the difference. And make sure that you are not using the same words. I mean, you part your words are changing. Okay. You shouldn't use, I mean, one word more than three times in your essay. So, um, I don't know if, um, I would like us to end here. I've spoken much. If you have any question with regards to, I can't, um, Right, the full list. I wanted to do the typing, but time didn't permit me, so that you know how the whole thing goes. So you remember that your paragraphs are very important, and your structure, how you organize your essay, is also very important. Because another day, you are not. It's not as if you shouldn't make mistakes. You should, but you should make sure that you organize your essay in such a way that it is making sense to the examiner. That's the only way you'll be given the required bound score, band seven and an above. So if you have any question about each one of them the body overview introduction then um we'll look at it hi hi sir, sir. I, have I have a suggestion okay yeah please, yeah please um, um tell me what, tell me what, what, you, what said, you said um it's actually, it's actually um, um something i've something been thinking, thinking it will help, help us as, as a group um, um, the way things are looks like, like um, we should, um, we do, should more do more of practice. Of practice. Yeah, okay. Get it. Get it. And, uh, and uh, because, we because we don't know what will happen or what will, or what be, will expecting be expecting at the end of the day, practicing, practicing would make it much, um, much um, um, beneficial, um, beneficial to us. To us. So, since so since we are all in, in, a, in, the, in, the, in the same group, group I suggest, I suggest um, we should individually um, maybe use maybe the, use the make, good make good use of the YouTube, YouTube um, website, websites, IELTS website. Then, website. then maybe, maybe we can try our, try our hands on each of the writing, of the writing um, aspect. Then, aspect. We, then we, we drop it in the group individually. individually. Yeah. Then maybe, then maybe if, I if I drop it in the group, in the group um, I'm brainstorming like people would like bring out my thoughts, my loopholes, what I'm supposed to do. Like that way, we would be would be moving forward. Okay. Because, because um, you can't take, you, you us, can't take through us through everything, everything. Because, the because the thing is so, is so much, much that, that um, we, can't um, we can't just 
or let's, or let's practice them. Practice them will just give us, give the, us ultimate the ultimate goal right, right now. So, so that is what that I is suggested. what I suggested. Yeah, that's true. So um, practice sessions will be coming up. Oh, uh, by the friends, as I said, um, there are people on the group. Some have joined because I don't know. They all have different uh, reasons for joining, but. Um, I prefer reliable. It's better the more you practice, practice, practice. The more you practice, the more you become perfect. So I'll try putting some of the sample questions in the group, and whoever wants to write can write, and we have a day to assess all of them. So I think it's a good idea. You look at it. All right. Sir. All right. Thank, sir. You. Thank uh, you. Harrison, any question? Um, okay, okay. okay. Well, okay. I, think I think I'm also, also okay, okay up, to up to now. Uh, uh, from what, from you, what started you started teaching up to this, up to this point, point, I think I'm okay. okay. I'm, I'm, very, I'm grateful very grateful for, for teaching, teaching, me, teaching me up to this point. So, um, I advise I just, it's a matter of just keep on practicing. I mean, and that it, it, and that is an everyday thing. Don't say, don't try to leave days or all of I'm tired, I'm not working on diet. Or, uh, because I remember I did 24 7 Sometimes I leave home. I had like a small ghetto. Probably I, I leave home, go and hide there. And sometimes I have to sleep overnight. All because of virus. Because I didn't want to waste away money. So you should have that mentality. Just know the reason why you are writing. If you just want to waste away money, then that's fine. I mean, you can just say, oh, let me just relax. On the day you are going right. But if you want to pass once, you should. Practice every day. Always be at it. Have a steady plan. I mean, okay, today I'm doing speaking and then reading. Okay, tomorrow I'm doing. Uh, so you look at where you are weak at and then incorporate more of it on your steady plan. Put more of that on your steady plan. Okay, so I have the quality of the reading. Okay, so I'll be doing reading almost every week. Okay, I have. Um, I'm good with the speaking. So I have to limit the number of times I do this. Maybe two times a week or three times a week. Okay, I'm good at the listening. Let me limit that and then channel more of my time to where I'm weak at. So I'm um, doing a plan in that way. And always make sure you are doing IELTS every day until you write. That's the only way you can get it. Otherwise it's like when you leave it for a week, you have to come back and start it over again. That's how it is. So I thank you very much for having time to come on this. But I think my motivation here is I don't need so many people but I believe and those who are interested in it wants to i mean i got to get what they want i think those are some of the people i have here and i'm very much grateful we we'll still learn more on the whatsapp page and our youtube channel and so i finally see everybody in the uk or wherever um, you want to go okay so thank you very much i think we can end now so shamla harrison we shall meet in the group all right Yes, yeah, okay. 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 Okay.